right. I want to begin in Ephesians chapter 1. Okay. Let's start in verse 15. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints, the people of God, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Okay, so usually we are used to praying for people until we hear of their faith and their love, and then we stop praying. Oh, come on. I mean, have you prayed for someone to, to get saved? And when they're saved, okay, they're fine now. Okay, but he says, now since I've heard of your faith, and since I've heard of your love among the saints, I have not ceased praying for you. All right, so when there's faith, when there's love, the next thing to do is prayer. Okay? So prayer needs to be added to faith and love. So he says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer. So it's prayers of thanksgiving. Now it says, verse 17, For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of him by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints and so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable, unlimited surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength which exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in heavenly places far above rule and authority power and dominion and every name that is named above every title that can be conferred not only in this age or in this world but also in the age in the world which are to come and he has put all things under his feet and has appointed him the universal and supreme head of the church, a headship exercised throughout the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. For in that body lives the full measure of him who makes everything complete and who fills everything everywhere with himself. And you he made alive when you were dead by your trespasses and sins. Verse 4. That God so reaches in his mercy because of and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful intense love with which he loved us. Even when we were dead. Referring to verse 1. He made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. Okay, let's look at this. All right. So he says... It my friend. Okay. I, since I heard of your faith and your love, I do not cease to pray with thanksgiving, making mention of you in my prayers with thanksgiving. Okay? So then I pray. Let me just get it here. To the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom. Okay. So, since he has heard of the faith and of the love, this is what he's praying for. Now he's really thankful. Now we can start going. Now we can do something. Now we can get some power on the scene. Now I can get something of the kingdom of God that is hidden, that is a mystery, to be revealed to the world so that God can be seen. All right? So he says, uh, a spirit of wisdom and, in, and, and revelation of insights into mysteries and secrets. Wisdom and revelation. Insight into Mysteries. So it's something that the natural mind doesn't normally know. Okay? 
What I have not seen, 1 Corinthians 2, quoting out of, I think, Isaiah 64, I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither has it come up in the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them that love Him. Okay, so since there is a love, since there is a faith, it's time for mysteries now to be revealed. Okay, so he's, he's praying for a spirit of wisdom and revelation. I should have had that other mic hooked up. Okay. By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light. So this will come by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light. So now the light of the Spirit comes to your heart. Okay. So that you can know and understand the hope. So that you can know the hope. Okay, so there's hope and there's faith and there's love which will remain. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Okay. So, so that we can know the hope to which he has called you and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints. Okay. The hope to which he has called us. So he has called us to a hope. So Romans chapter 8 says, how can you hope for that which is seen? For hope is still unseen. You don't hope for something that you already see. Come on, anyone. You don't hope for something that you already have. Okay, I hope I have the car that I have. No, I have that car. I hope for a better one. Okay, that I don't yet see. Okay, so in drought, you hope for rain. You don't yet see the rain. Okay, so when God has promised something, when His Word says something, His Word describes something that you do not yet see in your natural reality. That is called hope. Okay? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Faith is the substance of things. Okay, so how can you have faith if there's no hope? Okay. So he recognized faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith in the cross. The cross is the door. He says, now, since you have this faith... It's time to go deeper to see the mysteries that God has for you. What does the cross of Christ unlock for you in your life? Since you now believe in Jesus, since you now believe in the blood of Christ, now it's time for you to see by the Spirit in the Word what the cross of Christ has given in your life to you. So when we understand that the cross of Christ is not just your heaven ticket, it's much more than your hair or fire insurance, like some people say. Okay, it's, uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's not just a ticket to, to the heaven bus. But the cross of Christ, his body broken for you, his blood poured out for you, means the forgiveness of your sins, and it means the healing of your body. Okay, so uh, let's just put that here. Isaiah 53 so verse 5 says, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Okay, so your sins wounded him and bruised him. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our, our iniquities. That chastisement... That brought us peace was upon him. And by the stripes or the wounds, some other translations, that wounded him, we are healed. Okay. I want you, I just want to, to get you to understand this. The cross of Jesus Christ. Paid in full for your transgressions, for your iniquities, for your peace, and for your healing. Sin is to the soul what sickness is to the body. So Jesus' response walking on this earth, whenever he saw sin, he forgave it. Let, let that just work through our whole system. 
I'm talking about sinners. Okay? When he, when he got to sinners, his response to their sinfulness was, take courage, your sins are forgiven. He didn't ask a question. He didn't have them confess everything since before they were in the womb. He didn't have them confess through lists of, was your grandfather a Freemason? Was your uncle Katslachter? And, you know, did someone, hey, nothing of that. He didn't go back in the generations. He just said, take courage, your sins are forgiven. Because he was the very sacrifice for those sins, walking in the flesh on this earth. Okay, so that sacrifice, before willingly sacrificing his whole body, perfect, not having sinned, but being tempted. Okay, he sacrificed, but before that, he spoke a word to every sinner that he, that he met. Take courage, your sins are forgiven. To every sick person, he healed, just healed them all. So when he found sickness, he healed it. When he found sin, he forgave it. Oh, no, 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 you can't say. Yes, that's exactly what they said to Jesus. When he healed, oh, how can you heal on the Sabbath? Did you not just see the miracle? Did you not see the lame person walking? Now you're moaning about the person doing it on the Sabbath. Okay. When Jesus said, your sins are forgiven, who can forgive sins but God alone? He claims the rights and the prerogatives of God. He's blaspheming. Okay? Matthew chapter 9. Jesus said, what is easier for me? I want you to understand this. It is very easy for Jesus to speak this word of forgiveness over you. What is easier for me to say? Your sins are forgiven or rise up and take your bed and walk. Yeah. But to prove to you that God has given the authority or the power yeah. to forgive sins to the Son of Man, I say to you, layman, rise up, take your bed and walk. Wow. And he went. Yeah. So, the lame man walking was proof of his authority to forgive. Same coin. Sin, healing. Sin and sickness, same coin. And he paid a price to redeem you from both. Listen, I think no one in this place, I mean no one in the world, I don't know, the world maybe, I don't know, that's stretching it, but because no one can agree on anything in the world. In the church, I don't think anyone will disagree when we say that Jesus wants to eradicate sin from your soul. Sin from your conscience. Sin from your life. He wants to wortel and talk, take it out. Rip it out. Get it out of your system. So how did he do that? How, what is his... Method. What is the, the way in which he destroys sin in you? He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we were healed. Okay, so his body was broken and his blood was poured out. Okay. So, when we take communion, his body is broken. That means healing for your body. Yeah. By his stripes, you are healed. Yeah. When we drink the cup, that is his liquid forgiveness. That is the blood for the forgiveness of sins. Okay? So, he gave his blood for your forgiveness. He doesn't hold back the blood until you sort out your life. Okay. So, it's a very important thing that we understand this. Because in most doctrine books, 
in the communion, it says, you must first sort out your life and make sure there's no sin in you so that you can partake of the communion, otherwise you will eat and drink a judgment upon yourself. But that's not what the cross says. The cross says, that's the, the atoning sacrifice for your sins. The blood is the forgiveness of your sin. The blood is what washes your conscience from dead works and lifeless observances. If you want a clear conscience, you need the washing of the water by the word so the word of the blood of Jesus cleanses your conscience. If you want to be free from sin and guilt, you need fellowship with the blood of Jesus. That's the purpose of the communion. That's why he died. So all these things removes all the disqualifications before God. Jesus took all your disqualifications upon himself and he qualified you before God so that you can receive what he has promised. So what he has promised in his word is the hope that the word gives you. And when you have the hope, now you've read the word and you see this is available. You receive hope because you understand by his wounds I am healed, now there's a hope I can be healed. Okay? I look to the cross of Christ. I can see by his wounds you were healed. I can see those stripes upon him, the nails in his hands, the wound in his side. That's the price he paid so that I can be healed. Am I right? You see it and the hope comes. The price was paid. Okay, so now faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word. The word of the cross brings that faith to you. It brings the benefits. It brings the hope in front of you. And when you trust that, boom, there's faith. But since you believed, and since the love God shared, that shed abroad on that cross... He demonstrated his love where we are concerned, 1 John chapter 4, verse 7, that he sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for sin. Since that love has now been shed abroad in your heart, Romans 5, verse 5, since now you have loved people around you. So that's the proof that you believe. The love has come and it's touched your heart, the love, the love is flowing out. Now there's something that God wants to reveal to you. There are things that you are called to. There are things that he is drawing you into and he wants to equip you. He wants to release power over you. He wants you to stand in front and do things that no one has done before. But what do people do? We look to the past, to other generations. What is possible for me? What can I, and I look to the past. No one has ever done this before, so I can't do this. No, no, no. What does the word say? What I have not seen, what ear have not heard, are the things which God has prepared for them that love him. So how will you see the things, the mysteries, if you do not have a spirit of wisdom and revelation to show you the things? Again, back in 1 Corinthians 2, because no one knows the thoughts of, of a man except the spirit of the man that, that is in him, so no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. But the spirit of God reveals it to you. That is mysteries. So when you pray in tongues, what happens? The Holy Spirit comes to our aid. We don't know how to pray. But he prays with groanings too deep for utterance. The Holy Spirit prays mysteries unto God. Okay, when you read, what's it? 1 Corinthians 14. Okay, he prays mysteries unto God. So you don't understand something or something hasn't really, I mean, you don't know what's not revealed to you yet. I mean, there's, do you think you know everything that there is to know about God? Do you? Sometimes we act like it. Oh, we read it. I know this. Oh, I know this. Oh, this is boring. I know this. I know this. Oh, really? 
pray for a spirit of wisdom and revelation. But before we pray for that, let, let there be faith and love yeah. present. Yeah. Okay? Let's start at the start. Let's get our focus back on the cross. Yeah. Let's get our faith through it. And let's, let's get our heart loving again. Yeah. Let's not forsake our first love. But now since we have faith, and since we do love, Holy Spirit, there are revelations. There are mysteries that no one has known. And then suddenly, without you knowing it, without any warning, something drops in your heart. Boom. And then you're in trouble in many churches. Because you are speaking things that are unlawful. <laughs> speaking things that goes against many Sanhedrins. Many moderators do not approve. Listen, if you really want to go for the things of the Spirit, don't expect that everyone will celebrate it. Not everyone will be as excited about the miracles as you. Not everyone will be excited about the revelations as you, but make sure it's a revelation. Yeah. I've heard a lot of trash with people saying it's my latest revelation, and I'm like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then it's like... Mm. Then it kind of, the, if that revelation is true, it like completely draws a line through the cross and everything that is holy, and it's like, no, that's not a revelation, I'm sorry. <laughs> so make sure it's a revelation. So... That's, before we go for the revelations in the Word, let's make sure there's faith and love. Okay? Let's get anchored in the cross. Let's stand in fellowship with Jesus. Let's stand in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit revealed to me what is the mystery. And sometimes that deep mystery that He reveals to you is so simple that it just blows out all the complicated theology out of your head. It can, you know, it's sometimes it's excruciatingly wonderful. You, you feel like comforted to such an extreme that you don't know how to handle it. You feel like, like this is so good, I'm going to burst into flames. Okay. Jesus is not a complicated fellow. He's not stupid. I'm not saying that, that he's stupid. I'm just saying he's not complicated. And sometimes people's revelations about things, especially when it comes to news events being tied to the Bible in end time stuff, then it's like, ee. okay, let the Bible explain the Bible. All right, let's just get back to Ephesians chapter 1. Okay. I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep, intimate knowledge of him. Do you see that the mystery comes out of intimate knowledge? Face time. Sometimes face on the ground time. By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light. Okay, so Matthew 6 says, if that, oh, those eyes are darkened, how dense is that darkness? We want our hearts to be flooded with light. The Word is light. The Word is life. Okay? Don't bring other stuff than the Word into your revelations. So that you can know and understand the hope to which He has called you. And how rich is His glorious inheritance in the saints. Okay, now we need to just rewind to verse 11 concerning the inheritance. He says, in him also we were made God's heritage, his portion, and we obtained an inheritance. For he had been foreordained in accordance with his purpose, who works out everything in agreement with the counsel and design of his own will. Okay. Hebrews chapter 12, Jesus says, he for the prize that was set before him endured the cross, endured from sin of such grievous harm and bitter hostility against himself. You know, just think of him that you may not grow weary and lose heart, okay, in your own minds. 
So Jesus went through that cross with you in mind. He obtained an inheritance. You are his inheritance. You are the reason why he went through all of it. You are his reward. But now we have obtained an inheritance. He is our inheritance. And everything he is and has is our inheritance. We are joint heirs with him. All right? So everything he is and has. So who is Jesus? What does he have? What is his heart towards people? What is his character towards the world? Firstly, that inner integrity, that holiness, that's your inheritance. Okay? He was completely unbending and unyielding to temptation and sin. His answer was, it is written. Okay? Hebrews chapter 5 Verse 7 says, In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up special petitions and strong cryings to God, who was always able to save him from death, in that he was uh, we have it there. He was heard because of his reverence to, towards God, his godly fear, his piety, that he shrank from the horrors of separation from the bright presence of the Father. Just think of that. To Jesus, anything except the bright presence of the Father was horror. So if you think you're struggling with some sinful desire, what you need is a revelation of mysteries. The big thing is you don't know what you're missing. Once you've been exposed to his unapproachable light, but you can approach him with boldness because of the blood of Jesus. Once you've been exposed to his holiness, his wonder, his mystery, his glory, his radiance, when you are exposed to that, the more you see, the deeper you go, the less alluring sin becomes. So it loses its pull. It loses that gravitational pull. You, you rather pull deeper into God. So the mystery is for your relationship with Jesus and not to puff you up before men to make you great because you got another mystery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yay, I got another mystery and the whole world goes bananas because I got another mystery. No, hey, if, it, if it's not Jesus revealing himself through the spirit of wisdom and revelation, drawing us into that intimacy, into that knowledge of him, then what's the mystery for? Is it to sell books? Is it to sell, I don't know, Little copies of a temple. <laughs> what? I don't know. Stuff the gimmicks that people have had on Christian TV. Okay. All right. <laughs> or like, whatever. Okay. I'm not even going to go there. Okay. So let our eyes be flooded with light so you can know and understand the hope. Now it says, and, say and. So there's more. Okay. And so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness of his power. In and for us who believe. Okay, so the mystery, so that you can know the hope, and so that you can know the power. In and for us. The us is who believe. Not that inclusion thing. Oh, you don't even have to believe. No. Hey. No power in there. Any, anyone that started with miracles that went into that thing lost the power. Every person. Okay? That's the most destructive doctrine in our day. 
everyone is saved, or if universalism, everyone will be saved. No, it's for those who believe. Because the Spirit needs to reveal things to you. And if you could, don't get the Spirit if you don't believe. Okay. Right. So God wants the Spirit of wisdom and revelation to reveal to you the power. So there's power in the gospel. There's power in the Spirit. That power is revealed to you by intimacy with the Spirit of wisdom and revelation. Listen, someone may operate in a gift and not have any understanding. Praise God for anything that happens. Sometimes God heals people in spite of teachings. But then people say, oh, God is confirming the word with signs and miracles. No, you're operating in a gift. What's here? Yeah, God was what gave water through a rock that was hit instead of spoken to. Yeah. Okay, and God spoke to a donkey through a donkey. Wherefore strokest thou, thou me? What? With the donkey. Wherefore strikest thou me? donkey hit his foot against the rock because there was an angel in front of it and the prophet was so backslidden and he couldn't see the angel. Okay, God can speak through a donkey. Everything you see must be tested by the scripture. Don't take a doctrine if you don't test it. Listen, don't put that kind of influence and power into the hands of people. Everything I say to you, test it. So go home and read Bible. <laughs> and if it's not the word, chuck it out. But if it is the word, change your doctrine. Okay. All right. We, are, we want truth. Okay, so he wants the eyes of a heart flooded with light so that we can know and understand with the immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe. As demonstrated in the working of of his mighty strength. Okay, the word power there is dynamis, but the word uh, mighty strength is... Uh, I wrote it down. Krateo. No, krato. Kratos. Krateo is something that's still coming. Okay. But I'm not going to get to all of this that I wrote down here. Yeah. Okay. Because we are now, we are now there. We, the, that's where we are. We still have to go through all. <laughs> we're not going to do everything. <laughs> okay. So he says, yeah, we're not going to be here till tomorrow. Okay. So Kratos, it means it's like it really intense, strong power that is that is released. Okay. Okay. So now that's what he demonstrated. When he raised Christ from the dead. It says here. His mighty strength which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead. And seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. With God's power he raised him from the dead. He raised him from the dead. Now we know. Romans 5 verse 12. Sin entered into the world and death through sin. Okay. So. What is the ultimate aim of any kind of sickness? What does the sickness want to do to you? It wants to kill you. So sickness is death slowly taking place. If you have no immune system, even the cold will kill you. Anything will kill you. If you have no immune system. Okay. So the progression is sin, sickness, death. Okay. So that's what the knowledge of good and evil is. God says, don't eat of it. In that day you will die. So sickness started coming in, okay? So if that power that's revealed through the spirit of wisdom was used to raise Jesus from the dead, what do you think he will do to your knee pain? What do you think he will do to your deaf ear? What do you think he will do to cancer 
or to cystic fibrosis or to whatever name can be named that must bow its knee before Jesus. Okay. The power of God is available. It just needs, we just need to see it and believe it. We need to have that hope and put our faith in whatever God reveals to us that is ours through the price that is already paid at the cross. It is paid for. It is given. It is yours. Okay. All right. So it's far above rule and authority and every dominion and all those things. Okay. Don't give so much authority to sickness. We, you know, when people people don't even want to say a name of a sickness because... Listen, the name of Jesus is greater. The name of Jesus is higher. Let's just get first things first. Okay. All right. Luke chapter 5. And I have to skip a lot of things, but let's, let's just read this. Let us begin with you. Okay. Okay. Right. I want to be sensitive to time. You all know I can go on and on. Okay. <laughs> Can I have my water in the coffee, Chris, please? Thanks. Zebra. Quaha. Okay. Did you know the real Afrikaans name for a zebra is Quaha? Berg Quaha. And Bon Quaha. <laughs> Okay. Luke chapter 5. Verse 17. One of those days as he was teaching. Okay. We just need to understand this. When Jesus was teaching, he was not teaching like the Pharisees, but he was teaching like one who had authority. There was power when he taught. You can go through the book of Luke and see how many times he was teaching and there was power. He was teaching and there was miracles. He was teaching and was hearing all. So the teaching must go together with signs and miracles. Okay? So, all right, he was teaching. Now, just, just listen to this. I only saw this today. There were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by. Okay, that I saw, that I saw before. Who had come from every village, every village, and town of Galilee, and Judea, and from Jerusalem. Every village of Galilee, every village of Judea, every town of those places, and of Jerusalem. So, no wonder there was no space for the sick person. Okay. So now, you need to understand that every person present is a Pharisee and a teacher of the law. Every one of them. Okay. So if you've ever had a bum crowd as a preacher, this is it. Okay. <laughs> if, if ever you had no agreement. <laughs> okay. This, this must be it. Okay. Who had come from every village and town of Galilee and Jerusalem. Okay. And the power of the Lord was present with him to heal them. So the power is there. They could be healed. The power is hanging in the air. Because Jesus has wisdom and revelation. Jesus is connected to the Father. Jesus does what he sees his Father doing. So he can see this is the will of his father. He wants to heal all of these guys. His power is present. It was just like a lightning bolt away, you know. It was just like a little bit of faith. And they healed. I mean, how easily did the people get healed? There's the woman that pressed through the crowd with the blood flow. And she just touched the hem of God. And boom. The power was present. And when she did something by faith. She appropriated it, and boom, she receives her healing. 
okay? So, but there's something greater. You can walk now with Christ on the inside of you. You've been crucified with Christ. You're no longer you that live, Christ live. Now you can walk and the power can be present. And someone can press through the crowd and touch the hem of your garment and be healed. It's the same Jesus, that same Christ. It's the very same one that was walking in Galilee that is present inside you wherever you go. Mysteries of who you are in Christ needs to be revealed to you so you can understand who you are, so that you can understand the hope of your calling. So you need to understand who you are in Christ, so that Christ can walk inside you on this earth and do the same that he has done on this earth. Okay? John 14, verse 12, if anyone believes in me, he will do the same works than these, and even greater works because I go to my Father. So now that same Jesus is working with you wherever you go. When you lay your hands on the sick, that same Jesus is with you, and that same power to heal is there to heal every person. Okay, back to Luke chapter 5. The power was present to heal them. Verse 18. And behold, some men were bringing a stretcher, on a stretcher, a man who was paralyzed, And they tried to carry him in and lay him before Jesus, but finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd. They went up on the roof and lowered him with his stretcher through the tiles into the midst in front of Jesus. And when Jesus saw their faith, their confidence in him, springing from their faith, he said, man, your sins are forgiven you. So he was just waiting for someone who had a little bit of faith so he could reveal something from the unseen, so he could show them a mystery of the calling, so that he could show them this is the will of God. But what did the Pharisees do? You can read the scriptures, and they started to reason among one another. And they started to reason among one another. So if you're in a place where the truth is preached, in boldness and in power, where the Holy Spirit is present, where the power of God is present to heal. Don't sit, oh yeah, but you know, who has church on a Saturday night? It's supposed to be on a Sunday. You know, I don't like their music. I like this kind of music, you know, or they clap their hands too much. I don't want to lift up my hands. It's like, you know, but they, you know, but they, and they only talk about money all the time, you know, and they, they only, you know, right now, you know. I've heard all of it. Okay? All right. Don't reason. Don't reason around your miracle. Don't take offense against God. Don't take exception that God didn't heal you the way you prescribed Him to heal you. You need a revelation from Him. You need your eyes to be open to him. But sometimes he's gracious and do it, doing it anyway. I remember years ago, um, I'm just going to go, uh, I'm not going to f- be able to finish the thing anyway. So re- years ago at Spirit Word Ministries back in Stolfontein, okay, <laughs> there were miracles. I don't know, some may not know what happened there in Stolfontein between 2000 and 2013, but I think well, Oral Roberts actually said it, and he said it's more, he said that wild man in Africa <laughs> has more miracles than the whole of the healing revival, all the people combined. Oral Roberts said it before he died. Okay? And that's true. I mean, that's somewhere between sixteen and 20,000 cripples that walked. It's on video. It's people walking away from crutches and from wheelchairs. It's in that still... Crutches are hanging in the church. I want to decorate this place with crutches. The whole place. That's, that's like the very best decorations you can have in a church. Okay. All right. So there's this family that came from Bloemfontein. And they drove all the way to Stilfontein for Prophet Kubis to, to pray for their son who was on an oxygen thing. Okay. 
So he lined them up and he said, yeah, but we want a special prayer. We came from far. He says, everyone wants a special prayer. Everyone came far. So don't prescribe. Okay? If the man of God says, go dip yourself seven times in the river, dip yourself seven times in the river, I thought he would wave his hand over the place. Uh-huh, okay, same thing. Okay, so I thought the man of God would do this and this, but now he just said, go dip yourself in the river. We've got better rivers. Reasoning. Okay? So what he did, I mean, that church is big. It's like from this side to that side. It's 75 meters inside. It's a big church. Okay. Huh? More. More than double. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, it's much more than double. I think it's like the whole property from border to border. <laughs> okay. So, he just went. He went. We passed every person, blessed, 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 blessed. There's 5,000 people, so he just blessed, 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 blessed. Is that it now? They drove all the way for this. But the power of God was present to you. And there were some people in the building that believed. And there were some people that prayed. And they were moaning in their car, complaining that he didn't properly pray for the sun. Halfway back to Bloemfontein, they realized they never put the oxygen mask back on. <laughs> and he's breathing normally. <laughs> okay. All right. Listen, it's not you that can produce it whether you are coming for healing or whether you are ministering healing to someone, the Holy Spirit will reveal Himself. The Holy Spirit will reveal Himself. And He is who He says He is. Just, just believe Him and love. He will reveal Himself. May you have a spirit of wisdom and understanding so that He can reveal to you the hope of the calling. Okay? All right. Just want to share like two testimonies then we... Three testimonies. Then we lay our hands. Oh, there's so many. Okay. So now just this Sunday passed. There's a lady in the church. She came to me. She's always sitting around about there. And she said she doesn't like coming to the front. She doesn't like it when I, you know, some people don't like it when I put them on the spot and, you know, let them come forward and lay hands on that. Some people don't like it. She didn't want to do that. So she just stood up. She said, Lord, I pray that you just hear my ears. She took out her hearing aids. And she couldn't hear me in this place because with these speakers and everything, she couldn't hear what I was saying. Afterwards, it felt like I was screaming at her. And she took off her hearing aids and she hasn't put it back since. Okay? So Sunday she came to testify. I didn't even pray for her. But the Holy Spirit... Healed her on the spot where, where she was. There was just some faith in Jesus, and phew, he revealed to her something. Okay. All right. So, another testimony. We were ministering with Prophet Andre Bronkhorst in um, uh, Mosselbay a couple of years ago. And they had the New Season Conference. And then he... You know, he lined up ladies there with hearing problems, and he's, you know, he wanted them to get healed. He says, go pray for them. There's like 22 people with hearing problems. It's like, talk about being put on the spot, you know. <laughs> so, um, you know, they lined them up here in, in front of the hall, in, you know, at Axtara camps there in Mosul Bay, where Andre Broncos had his conference. I just said, okay, well, let's pray for the people. Boom, 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 we prayed for the people. And 22 people got healed from hearing problems. Okay, so this one lady in particular stood out, and she came to me and testified afterwards. She said she never heard in that ear because, you know, there's these tiny little bones in, the, in her ear, okay? I don't know what you call them, but they are these bones, okay, that's connected to the inner ear. 
I did have biology at a stage, but I can't remember all the names of the little bones. One of the bones, she was born without one of the little bones. It, it never connected. There was no, one of those bones was missing, born like that. And she just started hearing out of that ear. Okay, so God created one of those tiny little bones in her ear, just laying hands on her. Okay, all right. Another, which one shall I pick? Okay. I love telling this one because it's just wonderful. There was a lady, and she was um, around about mid-40s, very fit, and she was jogging, I think. And suddenly her heart just flatlined. And there were people close by, did CPR, they got an ambulance, and they had her, took her to Unitas Hospital, they had her on that ECMO machine. And the doctors just said, okay, the machine is now breathing and everything is, but all the, all the things are going down. So I was here in Onstais over days. Do you know Onstais? Okay. I was praying with a, with a lady, an old lady. And she, we were just praying about revival and we, we were just praying about, oh, that's, yeah, that's just another story. Okay, so after that, I drove to Unitas Hospital because my sister-in-law sent me this message. Please go pray for this lady. She just, her heart just stopped and she's on this machine. Would you please go pray for her. So I prayed for her. All the, the counts just kept on going down, going down. Doctor said, Well, there's nothing really they can do. The thing is breathing, but they can't find brain activity on the machines. They can't find anything. Okay. So I waited outside, you know, and after a while, her husband came with another family member. And so then I went in with him, her husband, and, and the other family member stood next, you know, on either side of the bed. I st- stood at close to the feet and I just stretched my hand over her. And immediately, I felt like a cloud around me. So, I mean, I couldn't see a cloud, but I just felt like, like immediately a cloud. I just stretched out my hand, and I put my hand on the blanket on top of her belly. And I just prayed a simple prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Healing and life in her body, in Jesus' name. And then I felt the cloud move over her. So I just started laughing. I said, just... Something happened. Now, please let me know what happened. <laughs> but I know something happened. I was in there for like 30 seconds. Maybe a minute. I don't know. But not, not really much longer than that. Okay. So, later that day, I got the SMS. It's a miracle that happened. Spontaneously, her heart started beating. Boom, 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 boom. She woke up, and she's fine. Completely fine. So they did some tests on her brain to see if her brain was fine and all of those things. And then just to be sure, they put a pacemaker in. <laughs> so, so she was discharged from ICU. Okay, well, first, because of the pacemaker, she was in a different place, uh, in a different ward, and then they discharged her. So from zero response, no brain activity, to going home, Okay, her heart just started beating again. Okay, so something connected. Something, there was something where God showed or revealed something through the Spirit. There's faith and hope connected. And the power was there to heal. And when the power is there to heal and faith is present, the sick gets healed. Listen, hear me today. It is paid for. It is paid for. Everything is paid for. Only believe. All right. All right. So I want to just, you know, lay hands on, on people. I really trust God that they... So before we just line everyone up, we, we, well, we're not going to line everyone up. We're going to do a, like a tunnel and you're going to walk through and we're going to ask God to strengthen you so that you can walk through. <laughs> okay? So, but um, if you are sick, we trust God for you to be healed. If you are not sick, on, and even if you are sick, 
We trust for an impartation. We trust for something of the Holy Spirit to reveal to you the hope of your calling. To reveal to you the power that is already being placed on the inside of you. Okay? God wants to reveal to you the power that is already placed on the inside of you. All right. Okay. By the Holy Spirit that is indwelling you.